Hello everyone, Helen here. It is lovely to be back again to chat to you today and uh, I am feeling a good deal better than the last time I chatted to you just before Christmas and uh, yeah that, I, I was poorly for quite a while and I would say I'm pretty much back back to full strength just about I think and uh, anyway feeling a lot better than I was and thank you for all the get well wishes that you uh, sent to me. And if you're watching this at the beginning of the new year 2024 then happy new year and I really hope that the year ahead brings you everything that you could wish for. Uh, so today I am mostly going to talk about knitted things, a little bit of crochet and I'm going to chat a bit about uh, journaling a, a little bit later on. So let's get started. So first of all, going back to December, um, I did an advent knit along that Anna and Carlos were doing. I know some of you were doing that as well. You told me that you were. And I chatted about it at the beginning of December and then it somehow got forgotten whenever I was chatting to you. But I really, really enjoyed doing that mystery knit along to make a stocking. It was really um, achievable. You, you had to do, on most days, there were six rounds of this uh, stocking to do. And uh, occasionally it was slightly different when you were doing the heel. And right right at the end, I think there were seven rounds to do. Uh, and that before you had to do the ribbing. But I am so pleased with, with it, with the stocking. It was just such a uh, lovely, lovely project to do. And I decided, well, I have once knitted an Anna and Carlos stocking. And I just, when at that time, I just used yarn that I had in my stash. And I think it was some Starcraft Aran, I think. Uh, and I, I didn't really like the, the finished effect of the yarn. I mean, I haven't got any problem with Starcraft yarn, but for the stocking, it just... I didn't like the feel of it or I don't know what it was but this time I decided I would try out the recommended uh, quite expensive <coughs> yarn that um, yarn Arna and Carlos were yeah were using for theirs uh, which was Rowan Rowan uh, Norwegian wool I think it was called I think it was called that anyway I, I, I love that it feels much much better than the stocking that I made before and uh, so so yeah so that's that's really lovely that's all all blocked and finished and ready probably to gift to somebody next Christmas with a few parcels put inside it and I might make another one as well it was just so nice just that it was just the right amount to have to do each day and uh, so I can highly recommend that nice pattern anyway so that's nice that was one one success before Christmas and yeah and so then I told you that I was making some presents for people uh, at the beginning of December I said that I wanted to try and get two or even three pairs of socks finished before Christmas and I did actually manage that I managed to finish three pairs of socks during December which for me is a record I, I probably wouldn't normally knit more than one pair of socks in a month you know because I'm doing it alongside lots of other things so uh, because I concentrated on getting these socks done and so uh, that yeah so then I got them done and two of them I used the uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas yarn from I think it's from 2022 certainly wasn't the most recent one uh, which has got a lovely sparkle to it and I, I really like those colours they are Christmassy and yet not kind of bright uh, red white and green uh, so uh, yeah I really like those and I made those for my nieces Nell and Libby and I thought they would both like the sparkly yarn but just so that they know whose is whose <laughs> I decided to knit a contrast uh, colour cuff and um, toe for one of the pairs and then the third pair was going for my niece's mom <laughs> and uh, I used some a sock yarn that I've had in my stash for absolutely ages. I think it's a German yarn called Schafparter, something like that. And again, I, I really enjoyed using that. And I did really, really want to make a fourth pair of socks, but that was just absolutely no chance. I, I managed to knit the cuff of the first sock. So 
that's for my brother and his birthday is in March so I think I might manage to get them finished for his birthday so yeah so that was the socks and I knitted a um, at the request of my mom she said she'd like a cozy for her uh, water bottle that she just kind of has has with her wherever she goes and not the hot water bottle a drink bottle that is but I completely forgot to take a photo of it so <laughs> so I can't show you actually my finished one although I have to say I wasn't really pleased with how well I didn't do it very well really um it was color work oh well hopefully I'll show you a photo here I think it's a Norwegian designer can't quite remember somebody Scandinavian anyway uh, I didn't do it in the same colours as in the pattern. I just used some uh, Shetland spin drift that I had in my stash. And I had all the measurements of my mum's bottle, but in the end, it was it was actually a bit too big. So it's a bit baggy. It's not fitting snugly uh, to the bottle. So I'm not entirely pleased with that. Maybe I'll have to do it again. But my mum was happy with it, of course, because I made it for her. But... Yes, so that was that. And then I also made a teapot cosy for my sister. Uh, and she absolutely loves having elves around at Christmas. And I thought she would uh, really like to have a, a teapot cosy, even if she didn't use the teapot at all. She just had it as a, a decoration. Because uh, I came across a lovely Etsy shop um, called Cosy Pots and the, the lady on there designs all manner of teapot cosies mostly they are different characters so you know you can get different uh, like you can get a nurse and a midwife and um, Santa Claus and uh, all sorts of characters and I saw this elf and I knew that my sister would love it so um, I used some bonus DK that I had uh, in my stash which was uh, actually was a bonus I think it was called Sparkle because it's got little bits of uh, silvery bits in it. And so that made it extra, extra sparkly and Christmassy. So I, I was really pretty pleased with how that turned out. So I, I can recommend the pattern. It was very nicely written. So I think that was my Christmas gift knitting. And since then... Uh, I've got back to working on the blanket that I showed you ooh, quite a few weeks ago. Maybe I started it in November or even October. Oh, I might have started it in October. Anyway, it's, you know, you know what, if you make blankets, you know, it's it's fine. It's one of those things you can just pick up and leave and <laughs> keep coming back to. So uh, just in case you didn't see the last time I chatted about it, uh, I'm making the Nature's Walk blanket by Sandra... I can't remember the name of Cherry Heart, Cherry Heart blog. And uh, yeah, so it's lots of squares. There's 12 different designs of squares that I'm doing. So I began by doing one of each design. And I think that's where I was up to last time I showed you and talked about it. And I have now done, um, so I need to do four of each design. So I'm now working my way through um, I'm not doing one of each again. I decided I'll uh, complete each set of four designs. So I've done five of the designs. I now have four squares. So that's 20 squares. The whole blanket will be 48 squares. So I'm actually, I think I am round about halfway because um, I've done one each of the other ones. So I'm just, just making my way through there, through the patterns there, I mean. And... So, yeah, I'm enjoying that, just picking that up and out, up, up again. However, the thing that I was really drawn to uh, once once Christmas was over and I was feeling a little uh, le less poorly and I wanted to pick up some knitting again, you won't be surprised to know. It was my favourite book from last year, Mush and Friends. And I think this book pretty much dominated um yeah my last year's making really and it inspired my imagination and oh well, I just I just uh, loved this book and I know that some of you now have this book and maybe some of you got it for Christmas and you're just starting to um you know work your way through uh, it really is rather addictive 
if you've got a bit of an addictive uh, personality like me. Um, and <laughs> when I first got the book and, you know, and had a good look through, I thought, oh, there's no way I'm going to make all of those. But there were certain ones that stood out to me that I wanted to have a go at. But now, uh, well, I have a feeling that I'm going to make all of them. Anyway, over Christmas, I have managed to make two gorgeous little ducklings for Gabriella. So I showed you Gab Gabriella the mama duck, and in the in in the book she's called Nana, uh, but uh, no, I called her Gabriella. And yeah, so she now has two little ducklings. If you saw before Christmas, she got one of uh, well her Christmas present that she got was a little knitting book for um, baby ducks. And I took the ducklings out. Well, you'll see actually they have got clothes on there, but um, I've only just finished those. And on New Year's Day, we went out for a walk and took the ducklings with us. Oh my goodness, it was a lovely day. Blue sky, sun, but the path was so muddy. I'm just going to show you a little video now. I didn't really video the walk much, but I'll show you them how muddy it was. And um, uh, and then some photos that I took while I was out because the ducks, the duck and ducklings came with, came with us. And I really do think that these little ducklings have got rather a mischievous expression on their faces. <laughs> the thing that I didn't do actually, which it says to do in the in the book, um, is to embroider a, a line where their beak joins to give them a little bit of a smile. But I looked at them and thought, oh, I don't really think they need it. So, so I haven't done that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I wouldn't say that they were any harder to make than the the mother duck because it was basically the same shape and yeah I tackled the Turkish cast on for the start of the beak and everything. Uh, it was a little bit more fiddly uh, because just because there were fewer stitches and only doing the little uh, tail tail feathers and yes, and since taking those photos, I have uh, knitted a little item of clothing for, for each of the ducklings. So I made the little, well, kind of a little top sort of a dress, isn't it? But I didn't think it would suit the, the little boy one. So the little boy one, I made the scarf. So I, I, so I think they look fine like that. The yarn that I used is absolutely beautiful. Uh, this was... Uh, kindly gifted to me from Angela and Andy of Attic Spin Dye. Um, I, I ordered some gorgeous yarn from them, which I'll show you another time, uh, next time I'm chatting about making things. Uh, but they also kindly gifted me a few things, including these two little skeins of yarn, and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, the colours in them are gorgeous, they're really gorgeous. And there were 10 gram skeins, so just perfect for making clothes for little knitted animals. So there we go. So I don't know what trouble that these two little ducklings are going to get themselves into. Uh, but who knows, there may well be a story about them before we know it. And then finally, final thing to show you today, a new project. And as I was saying to you, 
motion, from Motion Friends. Uh, I think I am now going to make every one. But when I first looked through it, one of the animals that I said that I definitely wasn't going to make was the bison. It just didn't appeal to me at all. And thought, why Why would I want to make a bison? I, you know, I don't... I, 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 it just didn't appeal to me. Um, I'm sure it'll appeal to lots of people, but not to me. Uh, but then when I was looking through and thinking, oh, there's only three that I haven't made. And I quite fancy making the raccoon. I definitely fancy making the sheep. And then that would only leave the bison. And I just felt really sorry for the bison that I didn't want to make him. So I thought, right, I'm going to dive in there and I'm going to make the, the bison. And yes, but this is, you know, I'm always saying things are quite fiddly. This has gone to the top of fiddliness, this one, because on the bison's uh, head, he has a lovely head of hair. And this is done with uh, a crochet hook and chains. Oh, my goodness, that took me hours and hours to do it. And interestingly, um, Cynthia Valley, the designer, says that it's going to be fiddly. I'll read you this bit out of Motion Friends that she actually writes. This part of the pattern is fiddly and requires patience. During these sections, a mistake can easily come from a forgotten knit one between the two chains or a missing knit one through back of loop past slip stitch over at the end of the chain taking the time to check that there is a knit in between the chains, two chains, and that you actually made the past slip stitch over before moving on, it's a good way to lower the risk of mistakes. However, it's also a forgiving pattern. If you make a mistake somewhere and end with an extra stitch, do not hesitate to cheat a little bit by making an extra decrease to restore the right stitch count before moving on to the next short row section. So I think that if Cynthia thinks it's fiddly, it really must be. And it was. So anyway, here he is so far. He's already told me oops, that he's called Benjamin, Benjamin Bison. And I do rather like him. So I'm quite glad that I've made him. Uh, but oh my goodness, that hair. And I actually had a little bit of problem with the, the first uh, horn uh, that I had to do. It's not quite right, but uh, it was too difficult to go back and redo it. I didn't realise it was wrong right till the very end. So I think it's going to be fine. One, one. I'm sure that, that in real life, bisons don't have completely symmetrical horns so uh yeah so there we go he is i've got his arms arms done and part of his body so maybe next time i see you uh he'll be finished and uh, so yeah you are rather nice though aren't you he's growing on me <laughs> okay then right so a little bit about journaling and <clears throat> quite often, well, for the last many years, uh, I have, at the start of January, started a new bullet journal. And for the first time, I haven't. I haven't started a new one. I have actually got a new one ready. But when I was looking through my 2023 bullet journal, I found that actually I've got quite a lot of pages left. Uh, I think the the notebook has about 150 pages in it and I've got about 60 pages left and I really really haven't used my bullet journal so much um, in the last year and, and 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 that to me that's absolutely fine because the thing about a bullet journal is it it fills a need if you have a need for a particular way of recording things or or of spending your time just fiddling about drawing things or whatever then that that's what it's for a, a bullet journal you shouldn't be a slave to a bullet journal and I haven't been in in the last year I have used it I've I've continued to record um, my walks that I go on most days and 
I've written in it just when I felt the need. Uh, and so I decided for the first time ever to use up those pages and to extend the uh, 2023 bullet journal into 2024. And I don't know if, if that means that if I start using it a lot, I'll run out of pages before 2024 is over. Um, I, I don't really know what's going to happen there. I, I've n never been very keen on starting um, a, a journal partway through, uh, you know, starting a new year partway through. So we'll see how see how that goes. But <clears throat> I haven't written anything into it yet, apart from saying at the start that I was going to uh, continue it into two. Uh, 2024. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I find that very interesting because I absolutely have loved um, using bullet journals for the last many years. And uh, yeah, so we'll, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. That, that's a, a new thing to me. Uh, but I have uh, got back to my winter journal that I made two years ago. So 2022 was the first time I started that winter journal. And that was really because I had things to do with Advent and Christmas and my birthday, which is in December, and um, <clears throat> and kind of just things to do with winter that I just wanted to put into a journal. And I really love that journal. I do pick it up and look at it from time to time. Uh, so I had a few things that I wanted to put into it. And also I realised that I hadn't shown you the um, all of last year's, well, 2022, the 2022 things that I put in. I hadn't shown you them all. I had to look back and in episode 108, if you want to go back and look at that one, I, I do a bit of a flip through of my winter journal up to the a certain point. So I've done for today a flip through from that point that I got to in 2022 because I added quite a few more things after that and I don't think I showed it to you um, <clears throat> anyway and then I'll show you the, the new stuff that I've put in but I've, I've done a little bit of videoing of uh, while I was busy adding things into the journal and then I'll follow that with uh, showing you uh, yeah what's in what's in my winter journal So this is where I got up to last time I showed you inside my winter journal. I had just 
um, put these photos in and I haven't added any words or decoration at all. So this was December 2022 when we went away in the camper van for my birthday. So I just added a few stickers and a few drawings of little stars and snowflakes and things. Okay, and on this page, uh, front of a Christmas card, as I've put there, I, it was I couldn't bear to throw that away, so I've stuck it firmly into there. And the other things on the page are just uh, the little newsletter that I sent to some people last Christmas. On this page, this is my actual picture I drew to use at the start of the, the last time I did an advent video, last, uh, well, December 2022. That was my picture and I didn't really want to throw it away. I thought this would be a nice place to keep it. And then here I've written a bit about my advent videos, which were just three Yuletide tales, which I put into my own words and wrote them in rhyme. Uh, so this was the story of uh, The Tale of Kindness, it's a German folk tale. I've stuck in here the, um, the little border painting that I made. And I used that in the advent videos when each day that I was showing an outline of the story so far. So here, so I've just, I just printed out the words and stuck them in here and I've added a few stickers. So that was all of the first story, which was all about the silver pine cones. And then we have the story of the wee Christmas robin. That was quite a short one. And so I just found a few stickers that had robins on them. To add next to the words that I printed out. And then the final story was The Kind Man in the Orchard. Lovely story. And again, I just decorated it with some washi tape and stickers. And then a couple of the drawings that I used in the videos while I was telling the story. That was the green man. And this was peeping in at the stable when the animals were talking. Um, here I saved a lovely bit of wrapping paper that was uh, wrapping a gift that I was given. A couple of lovely cards uh, that came with small um, uh, toys that I bought from Paula from Stitched by Mrs D. Yeah, that was a Christmas mouse that I bought. came with a Christmas mouse and this one came with a snow bunny after Christmas, that was, I think. And on this page, oh, I've just stuck a few more of my favourite winter poems. And there's a bit of wrapping paper that was designed by one of my nieces, Libby. Wrapping one of our presents. And so here we have some more of my favourite uh, winter or Christmas poems. Good Hours by Robert Frost. December. Snowstorm by John Clare and a poem that I wrote about Christmas as well that I've read that I've read before in, in um, Advent videos and then I stuck in some beautiful postcards I just bought them as postcards didn't really have any intention for them and I decided to stick them in here and I bought them from Nettle and Twig <coughs> And also in December 2022, I took part in the first 12 days of an Instagram word art challenge. And there was a new word prompt for each day. As I said there, I've, I enjoyed it, but I, I just didn't have time to finish it. So, so they gave you a word each day and you could just illustrate it in whichever way you fancied. Some work better than others. For some of them, I was trying out some new pens that I had and 
Mm, I wasn't really very good at using them. They were a bit smudgy. Anyway, so though, though these are all the these are all the twelve words that I did have time to to illustrate. <clears throat> and now on to the most recent Christmas. And I decided I needed to keep some mementos of my beautiful Stitch by Mrs. D teddy bear advent. So I stuck in all of the little bits of paper that came in with each parcel. That is those. And then I also had another advent cal calendar, just a normal one, cardboard one with door, a door to open each day and there was just a picture behind. But I love this uh, artist, Gemma Kuhlman. I came across her on Instagram. So there's uh, a miniature of the advent calendar spread and then you opened all the doors to see inside all those little houses and you can, I'm sure, see why I love that so much. I loved all of these little illustrations and I use these as inspiration if I want to do any drawing. I can look at these and get some ideas. And then finally, this is a leaflet um, from the Christmas event that we went to on my birthday at Bamber Castle, which I will tell you more about. And then last thing I've got in here at the moment is this beautiful Christmas card that my daughter Sarah made. She did a lino cut and it's just fantastically illustrated there. So I hope you enjoyed seeing seeing that, seeing what I've done. Uh, I don't know if I've got enough pages left to use it for 2024. We'll have to see. Uh, there are, I think there's about five pages left. So mm, we'll see. I might just add a few more winter poems into the back and then start a new winter journal um, at the end of this year if I fancy doing that again. But I think that's going to be all for today. I'll be back uh, very soon. Uh, hopefully next week I'll be taking you on the camper van trip that we went on in December uh, for my birthday, really. Uh, that was a, a lovely couple of days. We weren't feeling too well, but it was lovely to get away and get some sea air and just <clears throat> get away from the house for a bit. <laughs> and I've got lots more uh, that you can look forward to. Uh, in, in the coming weeks and months. So until I see you again, take great care of yourself, keep nice and busy, and I'll be back again very soon. Okay then, bye!